Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today we're going to work on two really simple, easy little necklaces using our Softlex Design Challenge Kit Sunset Splendor. So let's turn down and we'll get started. I'll show you what we're going to do. So out of the kit we have got our um, medium beading wire, a uh, garnet color. This is a the diameter is a 0 0.019 but this is the color that came in our kit so we're just going to use this spool from our kit and then we've got well I've got a lobster claw and some crimps right here of course that's to end it and down in here we have these beautiful um, deep red crystals that were in the in the box as well as these deep red pinch beads that were also in uh, our kit. Now the other thing we have here, which was not in the kit of course, are these um, tube beads. Now these are antique copper, they're um, a metal, and I'm going to use these as spacer beads instead of as, um, these are actually uh, artistic wire, large wire crimp connectors in the antique gold co um, copper color. And I decided rather than using them as giant crimps, um, uh, I would use them as spacer beads. So we're going to use these like as if they were a bugle bead. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our a length of wire out. And we're going to, I'm going to just bead right onto the wire. But I've already designed this, so I know what I want to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put the crimp tube on so that it's already on there. I don't have to worry about getting it on later. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, and like I say, use these as spacers. And we're just going to go with one of these, then one of these the little crimp beads. Now up on the top here, on this side and the other side, we're going to do um, five of these crimp tubes and with a pinch bead in between each one. So Here's number four. And number five. Now, instead of putting on one of the crimp beads, what we're going to put on, or one of the pinch beads, what we're going to put on is one of these um, beautiful dark red fasted rice beads. So, then we'll go again with our crimp tubes. This time we're only going to put four of the crimp tubes with a pinch bead in between each one. Okay, so there's number four. So again, we will put on one of our faceted rice. Again, with the four and the pinch beads between.
Now this is our central point where this uh, rice bead is right here. So now we'll just be turning it and going up just like we did on this other side. So it'll be four of these tubes with a pinch bead between each one. Go on there, baby. There we go. See, and this is four. So now we will put the next one of these on. And I don't know if you noticed, but I have two of these are slightly darker colored than the others. So I'm making sure that they're going in the more or less same spot on their um, side of the so now we want four crimps again, or four tubes, and three pinches. And then our last faceted rice bead. Now then we're going to go up and get these last bits here, which is going to be five tubes and four crimps. Or, excuse me, uh, five tubes and four pinch beads. And there's our last tube. And then we'll get our other crimp bead here. Bing. Put it on the end. Now I'm going to put a bead stopper on this side. And we're going to cut the wire here on this side. Put it aside for the other piece. So now that we've got this done, see it's how simple it is, just a very simple little everyday wearer. It's going to be about, I believe when we have it finished, it's going to be about 17 or 18 inches. As you can see, it is from top to bottom right now, it is just a little bit over eight, about eight and a half. So that would be 17. By the time we get our hardware on, it's probably going to be closer to 18. But very simple, very easy to wear. A little necklace you can wear any time. So let's get our hardware on. So we're going to just take this side and we're going to slide it through there and through the crimp bead here, or both the crimp, well, they're both crimp tubes if you want to be really technical about it. But. So then we'll get this pulled up to where we want to crimp it at. That looks pretty good. We want uh, to leave enough of a loop that we can put our jump ring in. We'll crimp. There we go. Now, I don't know if the pinch bead will take two lines. It does not look like it will, so we will get our extra wire cut right here at the base of this piece. Roll it around, and now we're going to crimp this other side. 
And again, we're just going to go through both the little regular little crimp and our uh, crimp that were our large uh, wire crimp that we're using just as a tube. So pull this down. Now we need to get back this off of the tube a little bit so we can crimp it. And I'm going to pull this up just a little bit so that it's not real uh, large. Turn and turn. And turn and I think it's done crimping so now we need to get in here and cut this extra line right here off and then we have to put our hardware on and this first little necklace is done let's uh, get our pliers out and we will open up our jump rings and put on our hardware. So of course this smaller one is for putting the lobster claw on and I did test this lobster claw, it's working fine. I always advise with a lobster claw to not only test it but to put it on a jump ring. Why? Because sometimes, see it's working fine, um, if your lobster claw breaks, because it is just a spring in there, um, if you if you have it hard wired into there instead of with a jump ring, it could um, break and then you'd have to restring your whole thing. Um, but doing it this way, with just the jump ring, then all you have to worry about is changing out the lobster claw because you have the jump ring in there. So there's our tiny little necklace, very cute, copper and deep red. And that is our um, first of our two necklaces. Isn't that cute? So our second necklace is again going to go on our uh, Garnet Soft Flex Medium Beading Wire. It's, these are its beads in here, and we're also going to need a little bit of gold chain. So, dump these out. I didn't get my jump rings out. That's all right. We can get them out later. And we will get some soft flex out. Now I don't think I need as much with this one as I needed with the other because I don't think it's as long, but because that's why we need the chain. But it is a little bit more, hmm, how do I put it, intense maybe. There's a couple of rings and a couple of our crimp tubes and this is going to actually end on those little rings. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these good on this cube. Then one of these space um, washer spacers. One of these two-toned fasted rice beads. This one is going to be the middle. And as are these pieces here, they're going to go in the middle with that red one there. So now we'll go with another washer spacer, take our lobster out of our way here, and then one of these. Now there's going to be six of the cubes and five of our um, rice beads on either side. With the washer spacer between each one.
One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And now this is number five of our cubes. Now we have one more rice and one more cube on this particular side. Okay, now this is our five rice beads and six cubes. We have the same amount for the other side. But now what we're going to do is we're going to put in another one of the washer spacers. But then along with it, we're going to put on, I call these disco balls because they look sort of like disco balls to me. And then one of this red faceted rice. The other little disco ball piece. washer spacer and now we'll just go up this line on this side just like this over here this is of course our center point I should have put my crimp bead on because we're going to have to have it on the end after we've got all these lined up here. But We have an extra one of these. So here we go. We're at the end here. Now what we're going to do is get a little bit more line out because, well, we're going to crimp here in a minute. We only need a little bit more line though. So get some out, cut it off. And we are done using our soft flex now, so we can set it aside. Now what we need to do is take and put one of these little crimp tubes on each side. And then we're going to put on one of these closed uh, rings. Now that is going to be what we're going to attach our chain to also. So let's... Now I didn't check to see if two lines would go through this square bead. I hope it will. Looks like it might, but it's going to be sort of tight, but that's all right. It's not like we haven't had tight ones before. So now that we've got this on here, we want to crimp this to the um, to our closed ring here. And we'll push our square bead up onto there. Now I know that these will go on. See, they slipped right on with no problem. So over these go. Now we'll pull this off. And now it's time to crimp this side. So onto here. And then across our ring. And into our crimp tube and our square bead 
Now come on, Square B, don't fight with me. The other side went in just fine. There we go. We'll have to pull these up. And I may need to use pliers to pull this little, because the um, little square bead is a little bit tight. But come on, you. Oh, my goodness. You want to be difficult, don't you? So we're going to have to ease it down to where we need it to be at because it wants to fight with us some. And that's right, we can make it behave. We know how. Now I'm going to put this through here. Oh, come on you. Go through there. I know I didn't leave a lot of room, but... I want this to go through here so that when it I pull it, it's on the side of the rice bead, which will give it um, a little bit of room to pull down and around without um, becoming a problem. So we'll get this down here. And as you can see, it now sits down in there pretty good. I want this a little bit tighter. And now we're going to crimp this right here. Oops, I flattened that wrong. Get out of the way. There we go. So now we'll get in here and we're going to cut this extra wire off here. And if you leave a tail, you can probably force it to go into the rice bead. So there is the beginning of this. It's almost done. We just have a couple more steps to make. And that is we need to decide how much chain to put on this to make it be the length we want it to be. So we got the ruler out here. And this is six inches so that's 12 and so we're going to want at least six inches of chain and I'm thinking a little bit more than six inches um, so that we can have a little bit of extender chain in case whoever has this wants it to be a little longer so I am going to put I'm going to put four inches on each side. Now I believe this chain is not soldered so I can actually open up the last link and then reclose it so that it will um, Actually, before I reclose this, I'm just going to hook it to one of my rings. Then I'll reclose it and we'll measure out our four inches. Make sure it's closed all the way. Looking pretty good. Now we need our four inches of chain. So it's right here. So let's open this link up. I 
actually I think I wanted that link to stay with the nope it's it's good here come on you close back up okay now we have our chain on both sides we don't need any more chain we can put it aside And now we need to hook the other side of our chain onto the necklace and put on our jump ring. And uh, if we want a decorative piece on the other side, we'll need to put that on as well. So we're going to compare our chain links, make sure I do have them about the same. And it looks like this one is one longer than the other. So I'm going to take this, just take this link, link off. But I am going to then open the next one up so we can put it on our ring down here. Oop, come on, you. Okay. Now, I even, if I wanted to, could put my lobster claw on one of these links, but I don't choose to. I'm going to put it on its own because if it should break, this one's fine, it would cause severe problems. So I'm going to just get a, a um, oval jump ring. And I only need to Two. And the reason I want that second one is I tend to put a pretty on the base of my chain so that it's um, not plain chain at the bottom. So let's open this baby up, go into our chain, and put our lobster claw on. Now as you can see, because I did use a lobster claw and this larger chain, if I wanted to, I could hook my lobster claw in any of these links over here and have it be as short or as long as I want. Now I think what I'm going to put at the end here is just a little um, daisy spacer. So we'll open this up as long as it's going to fit all right. We'll see if it will go through our little daisy spacer. And then put it on the end here. Come on, you don't fight with me for room. There we go. Now we'll close this up. And we have the little daisy spacer at the end looking sort of cute. Now because I made this the length I did on either side, if you close it right up here at the very top, I think we're going to have about 20-24 inches. Let's check that out, shall we? Yep, it's going to be 20 inches. Or you can make it much smaller by simply um, moving your lobster claw down to a different spot. So there we go. There's necklace number two. It was pretty and very simple. And I think they'd make nice little... Now, they don't have you know, a big focal at the end of either one of them. They just have that um, deep red rice bead, both of them. Um, though this one becomes entirely different here as the other beads on either side. So making it be um, definitely a difference. And then of course this is just the um, same as these other four, but this would be at the base. 
So there we go. There's our two necklaces using um, Softlex Design Challenge Kit Sunset Splendor. I hope you enjoyed making those with me. I think they turned out very cute. Um, and I really like them. So again, here's our necklaces. Our first one was this really simple little one. It's not going to be atrociously long. I think it measured out at 17 inches, maybe. But very simple and very, but very cute. Um, not long, not real short though either. It's, um, I think it's a way from my neck enough that it's not going to bother me. Um, I will admit that if it if it would be much closer, I would feel like it was choking me and I wouldn't like it at all. But I think it's very cute. So that's number one. So if you have any of those copper uh, or any, any color of these uh, tubes, or as the case may be, um, artistic crimp connectors, large wire crimp connectors, they make a great tube. Sort of like a tube bead. Um, but anyway, and this is number two. And so, now if I left it at its longest, this would be where it would fall at right here. So not a bad length, especially if you have a top like I have on and it's just got a deep V in the front. And of course, um, since it's chain and I could pull it up as far as, well, as far as I wanted, it would work way up here too. So there we go. There's our little pretty little, uh, Softlex Design Challenge Kit um, Sunset Splendor Two little simple necklaces made with that I hope you enjoyed making these with me. I think they were very cute. I think they turned out very nicely and I'm pleased with them This has been Rose from In Rose's Garden and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye